Okay. Well, good afternoon. Mr. Singh Shalini, so especially uh, Dr. Arun Gupta ji, uh, my distinguished uh, uh, friends from various uh, professional organizations, Dr. Jati Pran, uh, Madam Sangmitra Savanchi, Dr. Giridhar Gyani ji, Dr. Daswara ji, uh, indeed, of course, uh, my colleagues also from WHO and UNICEF, and the, all the esteemed participation, participants on this uh, meeting. I'm very happy to be a part of this uh, uh, conference uh, meeting, which deals with a noble cause, namely the cause of promoting breast milk feeding and breast milk access to children, to babies, to infants uh, in our country. We have uh, unfinished agenda in this sphere. All neonates, all children, all infants deserve exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months. They all deserve to be initiated into feeding in the first hour of their birth. And they all deserve continuing breastfeeding along with complementary feeding after six months of life. These are fundamental principles of uh, nutrition of uh, young children. Uh, I agree with the fact that the, uh, the early initiation of breastfeeding uh, needs uh, a very major effort. As you have correctly pointed out, that we have reached a level of uh, you know, 90% or 89% in institutional births uh, as per the NFHS 5 2019 21 but initiation of the feeding to the tune of 42 percent or so is clearly uh, not in step uh, with the opportunity. We have uh, made progress because if you look at the initiation of breastfeeding within an hour in 20, 2005 six, the so way down as 22 percent. So progress has been made. But there is a lot more that needs to be done. We know the benefits of, uh, of early initiation of breastfeeding. A, it makes breastfeeding overall more successful, even after discharge. And that's a very critical part. Today, we are talking about our work in the hospital, but there's a lot of work beyond that. Good start in the first hour and good start in the hospital institutional setting is way for a much more successful breastfeeding after these babies are discharged. So clearly that experience and that opportunity we have within hospital is so very, very, very uh, important. Uh, but we must uh, remember that the this uh, uh, issue of uh, early and optimum initiation of breastfeeding and optimum breastfeeding to the babies inside in the hospital has at least two important challenges or specific challenges. One challenge relates to the fact that there is a significantly high cesarean section rate. Our cesarean section rates overall are about 20%. It was stated as per NFHS data, uh, they're much higher in the private sector, 47%, as you saw. Yeah, higher in urban areas as you would expect and so on. So this complicates the matter and if you look at state-wise distribution of cesarean section as a proportion of all births, it's as high as 61% in Telangana uh, and so on. In some states it's really, uh, really high overall. 45% uh, in Tamil, Andhra 42%. And clearly these are well above the usually acceptable level of cesarean section and is a need to rationalize the choice of cesarean section as per scientific guidelines. But today we are talking about the impact that cesarean section uh, related morbidity or let's say situation uh, um, tends to offset our efforts on breastfeeding. Yes, it is uh, not uh, fully natural in that situation. But the fact remains, as you correctly said here, uh, that if efforts are made, successful breastfeeding 
and early initiation of breast feeding in cesarean and birth is also very much possible. And the tools that enable us to make a success out of that are you know, therefore very useful. I'm sure other organizations also have their own educational materials and their own approaches, how to make it, uh, you know, how to handle this. Uh, but clearly, this is one area. And I think the role of my distinguished colleagues from the obstetrics and gynecology fraternity here is very, very important. Because they are the ones who, in the hospital settings, are the first ones and in a more uh, intimate way in, are in touch with the future mother and the pregnant mother. Uh, preparing the mother uh, in, effectively uh, and answering her questions and the questions of the family, preparing them as well, is really critically important uh, for our obstetrics colleagues to, to take care of. Uh, Caesareans in particular, uh, since they impose more difficult situation with regard to feeding, <clears throat> when we are offering them cesarean section, an effort uh, of a way of guiding the mothers to still be successful breastfeeding uh, initiator is uh, therefore a very special responsibility of service colleagues. Uh, other teammates, nurses, uh, pediatricians, and others are also equally important. But hospitals also have a role to play, but they create an environment in which all these interactions take place. And their leadership makes it very clear that achieving high and optimal and perfect breastfeeding rates is an objective to be achieved for all hospitals, public or private. Uh, this is a noble goal. It's a, it's a humane goal. It's a goal that represents the very essence and very high point uh, of our medical profession. So I would request that all of us work together in that in that area. So there are general reasons for cesarean section. They must be promoted. Cesarean section saves lives. Un you un you use of cesarean section is at times unscientific and that should not really be accepted as a norm. But whatever the case may be, collectively, to give the best start to the baby, initiation of breastfeeding in civilian born babies is very much within our grasp, within our capabilities, and within our joints and death. The, the second challenge uh, for successful breastfeeding, special challenge, I would say, is to be able to deal with babies who are small babies. Uh, about 25% babies are small, and a few small percentages are babies who are who may not be optimally well. So there is a proportion of babies who need special help. And in particular, we focus on small babies. Small babies, because of their uh, maturity, because of their low small size, even if the maturity is low, because of the energy level that they have, because of the complicating condition that may have, may be the ones who fail uh, breastfeeding within one hour, an optimum breast milk feeding during the hospital stay and beyond. And therefore, all of us should join hands to make sure that special care, special efforts, and special uh, approaches are implemented by all of us to make breastfeeding success for all small babies as well. And here, there would be need for additional expertise or we may call tools or effort, which uh, should include expression of milk, which has been stated. But it is also about uh, storing the breast milk and perhaps even ensuring as much as possible breast milk banking, as we understand, purely ensuring that the breast milk of the mother of the baby, small baby, can be stored and given to the baby as per the protocol. To that level, that storing is not really very difficult. But there are formal ways of ensuring breast milk feeding. Then also, an important area is for us to be very competent in imparting feeding to the baby, small babies, using uh, you know the dory spoon, tube feeding, and so on. I like to see that there are tools available for this and they are promoted. Tools may be 
will have been developed by, of course, surely we have tools such as education material from AIMS uh, uh, system and website, the Oracle Forum, National Ecology Forum must also be having this. Please do promote all those tools that make a small business succeed with breastfeeding, uh, which is so. Now, uh, one of those who would fail, I want to appreciate, I want to appreciate the fact that there is a gap between 90 and 42 gap. A part of this gap, or I would perhaps think a significant part of the gap is in leads within infection babies, and we talked about that, but also equally importantly, uh, small babies who get moved into the nursery, or even when they're alongside the mother, uh, you know, they need special care and special effort. And their success would mean that they really. So, unless we address this challenge as well, our success uh, will not be enough to bridge the gap. And a very, another very important part and totally interlinked with the effort of small baby feeding is the initiation of uh, skin to skin and kangaroo mother care. That must also be promoted in all hospitals. All low birthed babies deserve to have skin to skin care. They need kangaroo mother care as per the national guidelines. And I, here I want to refer to the fact that, that 2014 AMC and optimal feeding low birth weight guidelines of the government of India for all hospitals, all babies are also available for all skin cells. So promoting skin to skin soon after birth helps in, is, is a norm for all babies. And then continuing skin to skin contact and kangaroo mother care is the norm and the standard of care for small babies. And we know that apart from other benefits, KMC promotes more successful breastfeeding, better lactational success, higher volume of breast milk, and higher uh, probability of, of a successful breastfeeding post discharge. Therefore, feeding and successful feeding in hospitals for our babies cannot be seen without uh, ensuring focus on small babies, as well as a clear focus and embracing the practice of skin to skin and cancer mother care in a very big way. Without this, there will be a gap. And indeed, I would say without this, there we are not doing an optimum job for the best welfare of the, of the, of our baby. And KMC also has, of course, uh, positive impact, positive effect on the state of the mother. So the point that I'm making is that collectively all of us, the KNI, IAP, NNF, AHPI, IMA, each one of us, DPNI, all of us should really importantly systematically focus on the feeding of those of the babies, the expression, the feeding technique, the volume to be given to the feeding, uh, common precautions, and uh, and an effective storage of this milk uh, in, a, in, a, in a rational way, breast milk banking, and also can do mother care. This is one part to which I'm sure our successful breastfeeding uh, in hospital will be achieved, and we will make our hospital to be breastfeeding and baby and mother friendly to this roof. Having said that, I also want to reflect uh, and I'm sure our influencer would also talk about this because increasingly uh, we will be dealing, we'll continue to deal with small babies uh, in time to come for different reasons. So clearly there are following sites or locations in the hospital that we have to be mindful of. One is the antenatal care chamber where there's an interaction between the future mother and the obstetric uh, obstetrician perspective of situation. That's where the talk about feeding, talk about breastfeeding could really start. Then they have a room connected to the recovery room where the baby and the mother would lie for a while. There's another another team and another space. Post-op recovery room, post cesarean, where immediate breastfeeding as much as possible needs to be ensured and it can be made a success. And third area is the standard postnatal room or a ward. But the fifth area is also nursing. So I want that all of us should remember there are a lot of babies, significant number of babies and very special babies 
Allah in the neonatal years. And there the feeding, again, the standard of feeding is breast milk feeding. And I talked about the fact that small babies deserve breast feeding. And several of the small babies who are particularly a certain uh, gestation and age, uh, as well as those who are unwell of any gestation and weight, are in the newborn unit. Therefore, promoting breastfeeding practices for the babies inside the nursery, when the standard of care remains breastfeeding, is also an area of work. And there should be tools for this. DP and I and everybody else should also talk about how to ensure that babies who are in the neonatal care set up intensive care or otherwise for very good and general reasons also receive optimum support for this feeding and here I've already elaborated the notion of feeding of the low birth baby because those are the principles that really determine overall feeding efforts. So I want us to remember that hospital is not just the labor room, hospital is not just the, the cesarean section operation theater, it is the post-op area, it is the labor room, you know, joining area where babies would be in the obvious things of their life. Then the ward, then the newborn unit, and above all, the, the chamber in which there is an interaction of the mother, the future mother, uh, and the present mother, presently the future mother, uh, who is in, in discussion with the, uh, with the obstetrician. We have highlighted how this can be achieved. The points are well taken. But I think for others who are not at an optimum state right now and would like to move further, additionally, a quality improvement paradigm can be used. That's a use that shows how a change can be brought about systematically as a team effort. So I would encourage that in order to achieve optimum adherence to standards of care, including breastfeeding, an approach QI, quality improvement, which looks at where we are, which analyzes what the gaps are. The gaps are maybe counseling gap or education gap or a structural gap, uh, and so on, are then systematically addressed. So I strongly endorse and appeal to all hospitals and those of us who are in the business of improving this particular outcome must know that there is a systematic approach which uses data to make a change which uses the scientific principles to make a change, should be embraced and be made use of. I'm very proud of the fact that the nation, and indeed with the leadership of the obstetricians, neonatologists, pediatricians, nurses, grassroots teams, doctors, other stakeholders, has been successful in bringing down child mortality in a very big way. We achieved the child, under five child mortality and DG, which people did not believe. We were able to bring down under five mortality rate of the 1990 level, whatever it was, to be by two thirds, by 2015. This nation did it. You all made it. The leadership, all the professional groups and the hospital system that are here have been responsible for doing this. All of you did, all of India did, we all did, we as a nation did it. And we are on track to achieve the SDG goals with regard to neonatal and under five months. We accelerated our neonatal mortality much more than what the world could do. People did not do it. That is the power all of you, all of us have. We are, I'm repeating that we are on track to achieve our NMR of 12 or less by 2030. Under five mortality of 25 or less by 2030. In this regard, ensuring optimum breastfeeding, which has so many benefits of growth, development, uh, finer elements of our cognition, sensory, uh, social sensory you know, aspects, as well as infection prevention and, and bonding, and also maternal benefits, is an intervention which is waiting to reach saturation levels. And saturation level, which is also combined with quality, and surely uh, achieving highest possible breastfeeding rate, breastfeeding feeding rate, as the case may be, will further help achieve uh, the health goals, the nutrition goal, but also 
uh, help achieve smart future generation, which will deliver us 2047 goal of Vixen Bharat and beyond. And we want our babies to be strong, our babies to be well married, to be healthy, to be cognitively highest of the highest level. And in that regard, the global uh, noble intervention in the form of breast milk and breast feeding that we have will go surely a long way. So I, I admire that we all are stakeholders of promoting this noble, this you know godly, this you know task uh, and endeavor. We have gaps to fulfill. We have a we have a technology and tools among putting all of us together. We know how to do it. We have the knowledge of how to scale up such training, how to make a change, for example, by QA approach, QI approach, sorry, quality improvement approach, and how we can face a physical challenge that comes out with interventions, which are often necessary, but not always so, such as the Sugarian section or you know, force separation that may happen. But we also must be uh, must be mindful in the end, I like to emphasize again, that breastfeeding journey and breastfeeding separation and quality achievement are not possible unless we make a consultative effort, systematic effort, evidence-based effort to ensure that our low birth rate babies, whether in hospitals or there, whether within one hour or there, whether in the ward or in the new boundary, receive breast milk feeding and breast feeding and they train to directly breastfeed ultimately after our support for a few hours or days. This is a journey which is not complete without achieving this work. And here, the role of kangaroo mother care is intricately and inseparably linked to our efforts. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My best wishes. Uh, thank you. It's been an honor to be a part of this. Yes. Yes.